interfaces are synonymous with contracts. They enforce behavior. They require or demand that a class be able to implement the behavior defined by the interface. Let's take this example. We have an HTML file class and we have a array or an array of files. And we're going to loop through that array of files and we're going to parse those files using this parse function. Now this parse function is going to accept a file and simply say, okay, ver dump file parse HTML. For the sake of example, we're just ver dumping and saying, hey, parse the HTML file. If we run this, we get parse HTML. And if we add more than one file, and we of course add our comments too, or our commas, we rerun that, parse HTML, parse HTML, parse HTML. It does exactly what we would expect. But let's say our boss comes to us and says, hey, we need to take into account JSON files. And so we get JSON files and we fill our JSON file array and or our files array and we add JSON files to it. Of course, if we were to run this right now, every single loop, we're still parsing HTML. We're still implementing the behavior to parse an HTML file. So in our parse function, we would have to add a conditional. If is a and then HTML file ver dump html else if is a json file parse json then we rerun the example parse html parse json parse html parse json parse html it properly works and of course, this is just an example. In real life, we would actually have to implement the functionality to parse HTML files and implement the functionality to parse JSON files. Now imagine our boss comes back to us and he says, okay, we have to add CSV files. So of course, we add the CSV file class and we say, okay, okay, this is kind of getting old, but whatever, we'll do it one more time. And we just add CSV files in there anywhere we want into the array. And then we have to copy this again. And then we have to do else if is a CSV file, then parse CSV, right? And so now we've done this three times. And every time we add a new file type, we have to check what is the class and then we have to decide on the behavior we want to run based on the class or the file type this is a perfect example of where we can use interfaces now again interfaces are just contracts so we're going to create an interface we're going to call it a file contract interfaces define functions that classes are forced to implement so we're going to create a parse function now the difference between an interface and something like an abstract class is that the interface doesn't even use the brackets. If we try to add the brackets and then add like echo parse file or something like that, it doesn't even let us do that. The air, the red squiggly says interface method cannot have body. All an interface does is define the function. Then when we implement that interface on each of our classes, on our HTML file class, on our JSON file class, and on our CSV file class, they will all also get the red squiggly. And that error is being thrown because that class must be declared abstract or implement the method parse. 
because the HTML file class implements the file contract, it is contractually binded or forced to have a parse method. So if we add this parse method and we just say there dump parse HTML file, the red squiggly goes away. The same thing for the other file classes. So all an interface does when a class implements the interface, it just says, hey, you are contractually forced or obligated to have the functions, aka behavior, that this given interface defines. It is just a contract demanding that a class have the functions of the interface. The interface does not define the specifics of the behavior. It just demands that the class has the behavior. It just demands that the class has the functions. So why is this useful? Well, notice that down here in our parse functionality, in our parse function, we're saying if is a file HTML file, if is a JSON file, if is a CSV file. Well, we can actually pass in the file contract. And what this does is it says, okay, this parse function will only accept objects from classes that implement the file contract interface. So now we know that every single time this parse function is ran, if it is not a class that implements the file contract, the file contract interface, then it will throw an error. So we are assured that we always have this parse behavior because anything passed into this parse function is contractually binded to have this parse function, to have this parse method. So that is how that works. Um, and of course, if we were to rerun this, mm -hmm. parse HTML, parse HTML, I forgot to change the bare dumps up here. So JSON and CSV, just like that. So if we reopen that, rerun that, then we get parse HTML, parse CSV, parse JSON, HTML, CSV, JSON. Mm -hmm. And if we were to completely remove all these files, and we just said, I don't know, XML file. Well, check this out. Uncaught type error, argument one pass to parse, must implement interface file contract. So because we are type hitting the interface right here, this function will not run unless whatever we pass in implements the file contract interface. Even if we do just an XML class and we don't put anything in it and we just say new XML, this will still air out. The reason it airs out is because the XML class still does not implement the file contract. And by implementing the file contract, the XML file class is forced to implement the parse functionality. Parse XML file. So now, because we have another file class, and that class does implement the file contract, this parse function will accept the XML file class. Parse XML. And of course, if we wanted to go back and add, you know, new HTML file, new JSON file, new CSV file, et cetera, et cetera, and we want to add new files now, well, instead of every time when we add a new file class, uh, I'm running out of file extensions, um, I don't know, let's go with PHP file. Yeah, that works. And instead of having to go down here and add an if up here every time, we just implement the file contract. And then we just add public function parse. And then var dump or implement the behavior specific to that file class. And that's going to be parse PHP file. And so now we can add as many file types as we want and extend our code instead of modifying our code, modifying or adding if else's, 
we can now create more classes that implement the file contract and just add own customized behavior specific to that class. Um, that is interfaces in a nutshell, guys. That is interfacing interfaces acting as contracts and forcing a class to have behavior and then accepting an interface via type hints within a function. Guys, this is extremely, extremely, extremely powerful stuff. Interfaces are the backbone to so many, so many architectural concepts. If you go through the uh, solid series we have on the Clean Code Studio channel, I believe just about it's four of the five principles uh, rely on the proper usage of interfaces. So interfaces are extraordinarily powerful and uh, they're not really that hard, guys. The interface defines a function. When a class implements the interface, it is just contractually binded to have the same function defined in the interface that it implements. Pretty, pretty simple once you wrap your head around it um, and really cool stuff. So guys, that's all I have today on object-oriented PHP and specifically interfaces. If this was useful, like and subscribe and I will keep these things coming. In our next video of object-oriented PHP, we are going to focus on encapsulation. And that will be the final video of our object-oriented PHP series. Thanks again, guys. Stay tuned. Simpler, simpler.